Here we have a 24 hour filtration schedule for a variable speed pump, the Hayward Super Pump variable speed. Um, and we are going to be looking at a system with inch and a half plumbing, about 30 feet of head resistance to flow, and we're going to see about 10 PSI on the filter at 3200 RPM. 3200 will be the maximum that we're operating at for this schedule, 2000, 2500, and 3200. Now, what is significant about this filtration schedule is I consider this to be a good example for somebody who might have an electric heat pump. And the reason why is we achieve a minimum of 40 gallons per minute for long periods of time. With variable speed pumps, a lot of the time you'll run at very low speeds for long periods of time because that's how you achieve the most savings. Electric heat pumps need long hours to operate and they require a fairly significant flow in order to do so. And so that's why this might be a good example of one of these systems. With this example, we're going to get just under 65,000 gallons of filtered water per day at a cost of about $1.22. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you these speeds and flow rates and power consumption values right now. 2,000 RPM is first. Let's take a look. Just over 40 gallons per minute, 40 and a half. And just over 270 watts of power consumption. Let's take a look at the second speed. Twenty five hundred RPM. Right around 50 and a half, conservatively, gallons per minute. And just about 500 watts of power consumption. Now let's take a look at that 3200 RPM speed. Just a shade under 10 PSI on the filter. 65 and a half gallons per minute. Just over a kilowatt power consumption. 1,020 watts is how you would read that. Now let's look at that power calculation here. With, we're within a few percentage of the values that we just measured there. The variance in voltage changes these numbers just ever so slightly, but we're looking at about 9.41 kilowatts of power consumed, and you pay for your uh, power by the kilowatt hour, usually about 13 cents per kilowatt hour based on the nationwide average. 9.41 kilowatt hours of power consumption, that's $1.22 a day, just over $36 per month. And that's how we get these calculations here for $1.22 using 9.41 kilowatt hours of power, just under 65,000 gallons of filtered water. And again, this would be ideal for an electric heat pump or, so, or a system that needs long periods of time where you really never drop down in your flow rates. Like 40 gallons per minute, that's fairly significant. Most heaters should be able to fire at 40. Maybe 50 or 60 might be optimal for heating, but I think most of them will be operating at 40 gallons per minute. So this is an economical way to run a heater for long periods of time. In this video, we're going to be programming a 24 hour schedule for this Hayward Super Pump variable speed model. And this video in particular is going to be looking at a situation where you have an electric heat pump. Now, 
Every swimming pool is different, and it's very important to understand that. So I can only tell you what my system uh, operates at and what my system needs, and then you can kind of use that information to extrapolate and understand your situation a little bit better. Let's go ahead and get started with this programming, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what I mean as we go. So first, I hit the menu button until we get to the timers menu, hit the right button or the right arrow, and then that's how we get started here. So timer one, I want to make a change to, so I press plus to access timer one. I don't want to change the name, I'm fine with that, but I do want to change the RPM. Right now it's flashing 2500 as you see, and I'm going to dial this down to 2000 RPM because on my system I've already tested that 2000 RPM gives me exactly 40 gallons per minute, and that's exactly what I need for my electric heat pump to operate. This number will be different on your pool if if and depending what gallons per minute you need for your heat pump. Mine was 40 gallons per minute, and so that's what I'm setting it for. If yours is different, your numbers will be different for the RPM here. Now, as for the, the time that I'm setting this for, I want my 2000 RPM, which is 40 gallons a minute on my system, to start at 6 a.m., and I'm going to let it run all day long to 6 p.m. And this is where this is where this schedule relates specifically to an electric heat pump because all day long here I want my heat pump to be able to run and I know that it takes 2000, R, uh, 2000 RPM or 40 gallons per minute on my system so there we go I'm set for my electric heat pump to do its thing next we go to timer 2 I want to make a change here not the name but I want to adjust my RPM to 3200 there we go and this is just for one hour that I want to do this so I'm gonna set this to 6 p.m. there we go and then of course 7 p.m. you can also just hold down the button I'm just impatient there we go 7 p.m. Seven days a week, again, is what I want. And that's timer two. Moving along to timer three. Press up to make a change to timer three. Right, because I don't want to change the name. I do want to change the RPM. And I'm going down to 2000 RPM again. There we go. And then I want that to operate from 7 p.m. Seven PM, there we go. Until eleven PM. Remember, every pool is different. This is just an example. Alright, so that's timer three, proceeding to timer four. And then I want to change that thirty two hundred. Actually thirty two hundred is exactly what I want. So I'm going to leave the 3200, but I'm going to change the time from 11 p.m. until midnight. And what I'm doing here is I'm just giving it an hour at the higher speeds because I think the pool will benefit from having that. There we go with speed or with timer four. And now we're in timer five. Again, I want to make a change here not the name. I do want to change the RPM back down to 2500. There we go, 2500. And then I want to go from midnight until 6 a.m. And that completes my 24 hour dynamic schedule. So I hit uh, or advance here because I do want it seven days a week. Timer five, I had, there was a setting in here already. I'm gonna go ahead and change this here. Oh wait, there we go. Timer six, sorry, timer six is off. Timer seven's off, timer eight's off. There we go. Press menu, and now we have to press the plus button to save. The programming that we've just installed. Once saved, the pump's going to restart at the new programming that we've just entered. 
If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.